Hi, welcome to this video. My name is Norma and today I just want to make some paint skins out of acrylic paint. The reason why I like to do this is because after it's dried it's very thin and I can cut out shapes and use for different projects. The supplies you're going to need is some acrylic paint, freezer paper, and some water. And little cups and stir sticks of course help. The important thing is the freezer paper because that's going to allow you to peel the paint off once it has dried. The first thing I'm going to do is you'll see me take the colors and pour them into little cups. We're going to use white, gray, a dark blue, and a light blue. Um, the brand of acrylic paint does not matter, or at least I have found that it doesn't matter. I've used different brands, different types. The light blue you'll see me use is actually a sample of house paint. I like to go by Lowe's and Home Depot and look at their rejects because you can get paint there pretty cheap and I've found it works just fine on this. Now I do want a really thin consistency. The thinner the paint pours then of course the faster it dries and also I don't want a thick paint skin. For what I'm going to use these for I need it to be thin so I can glue them down and then resin over it. So right now I'm just mixing the paint with water. You'll see one of my stir sticks is actually just a branch from outside. I do like to take the branches and other things and use them to stir paint. They work just fine. Just clean them off, let them dry, and they're great. I'm going to add water slowly just to get it to the consistency that I like. I do like it really runny um, for this project. You do want to try to get the paint the same consistency or the same thickness. If one is really thick and the others are runny, the thicker one tends to sink to the bottom and you won't see it as much on the top. So I'm going to fast forward and I'll see you once I get them all mixed up. Okay, now that we have them all mixed up, I'll take another small cup and I'll pour the colors into it one by one, kind of layering the colors. It's what's called a dirty pour. And I'll start with the white first, and as you'll notice, it kind of plops in. It doesn't pour in like I would like, so I'm like, Eep. let me go back and maybe mix that again. The white paint that I used was pretty thick to begin with. Luckily I started off with that, so I was able just to scrape it back into the cup and add a little bit more water and mix it up again. It would have been fine, and you'll see some of the other colors maybe aren't as smooth as I would have liked, and they'll work, but I just really wanted the white to be lighter so that way it wouldn't float down to the bottom, but it would stay more on the top with the other paints. So I'll mix it up, mix, 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 add some water, that looks better, and we'll try this again. Yeah, now the white's looking much better, so we'll start pouring it into the cups. Just alternate the colors uh, however you want. I'm going to pour most of the paint in there. I'd rather have extra paint than not enough. So. And also, whenever you're through, you can actually scrape out the rest of it if you're missing like any little spots on the paper we're going to use to pour it on there.
sorry for the quiet time whenever I fast forward the video. I haven't figured out yet how to attach music or what music I can use. So in the future, I will figure that out. Um, so what I did is I took some freezer paper and I just taped it to the inside of a metal pan I have to make it easier to move around. Then I just pour the paint in and as you can see, we're just moving it around to spread it out. Also, just get some interesting, not shapes, get some interesting <laughs> designs in it and then you'll see some cells also come in. And this really is just up to you. I just move it around. I try to stretch it out because like I said, I do want it thin because I'm going to cut it and then glue it onto coasters. And then once you get it to where you like it, in which that's pretty good, that's quite a bit of space. Right there I'm just fixing the tape because it was a little bulge in the center and I don't want any bulge or you want it flat so it dries flat without any kind of ripples or anything. Here I'm just adding some extra blue paint that I had because I thought the gray needed some more blue in it. Uh, I ended up not really liking it once I did it. Added some other colors, move it around. But that's the fun thing about it is you can move things around and it's going to change a little as it dries. It will spread a little bit more and sometimes if you have cells, those will disappear or you might get more cells. Now, if you're wanting lots of cells, I would recommend um, taking a spray bottle with alcohol. I use 91% rubbing alcohol. And whenever you spray that on, when it's wet like this, the alcohol reacts to the water in the paint and it will create cells. I just didn't want a whole bunch of cells. So I just left what came naturally and I liked it. Okay, so we're just about done. Now this I'll leave overnight to dry. Depending on the humidity, I do live in Texas, so it can be higher. Um, it may take a couple days to dry. Also depending on how thick it is, which is another reason why I like it thin. So after a couple days though, it'll dry. And this is one that I did already. Just want to show you, once it's completely dried, you'll be able to peel it off from the um, freezer paper. Now you do have to be careful because the paint will rip. Um, it's pretty delicate, but you'll see in a minute I find a corner to tear it, or not tear it, excuse me, to um, start peeling it away from the freezer paper. Now I like to cut my shapes out while it's still on the freezer paper, so that's why you'll see that I don't tear very much of this off. I just peel it back a little, put it back, and then some of them that I've already done from another painting that I had done. I cut those out and I made circles and there's the freezer paper behind it. And you can see one neat thing is that it'll be two different designs and colors on each side. So you can choose which one works better for you. That was actually the top, but the gold paint I used was really thick or heavy and so it fell to the bottom. So that's the bottom side where you can see more of the gold. Now what I'll do is I'll go ahead and glue these on and then resin over them. If you're interested, I will be making a video on the completed coasters. It'll be out in a couple days. And I just thank you so much for watching. And if you have any questions, please let me know. Until then, have a great day.